friends, it's Kylie with you, otherwise known as Paper Sweet Pea. And today I am collaborating with Lauren Hines, who is Craft Some Joy, for another Scrap With Us video. Today we're going to be working with the brand new Happy Hauntings collection from Creative Memories to create a fun Halloween layout for you all. Now, as always, on papersweetpea.com, you will find the downloadable instructions for my layout today. And be sure once you've watched my video, you head over to Lauren's YouTube channel and her website to see her layout as well. I'll link everything below for you. But for now, I'm here live with you, so let's keep the chat box rolling and check out the layout I've made for you all. Now today's layout is actually a single page design that I've created and I've got just a few tools here that I'm going to work with. I've got the brand new Spiderwebs Frame Punch, which I absolutely love. You can work with this in so many creative ways. I've also got my Circle Cutter and I've got my smallest oval cutting template and red blade. Now I've just gone through both the Happy Hauntings uh, designer paper pack as well as the Happy Haunting Shades of Hauntings paper pack and I've just selected a few papers uh, that I think will complement each other well for my layout today. And I've also just got a sheet of um, black cardstock as well that I'm going to work with. Now you want to select a sheet of paper that you want to be your main background. I'm going to go for um, something quite dark, a good contrast, and that's this beautiful wood grain finished paper. I really love the effect of that. On the reverse of it is those beautiful little frames. However, I'm going to work with the wood grain side. So I can just set that aside for now with my cardstock. All right, so I'm going to bring in the gold toned paper first. And we're going to rule some markings onto this paper to help us um, punch out the spider's web. So I highly recommend working with it face down on your cutting mat and that way you're not going to see any of the pencil markings. So essentially we're working on the reverse of the paper. And you wanna make sure that you've got it perfectly square and lined up to your cutting mat. And I'm just going to bring in a ruler and pencil and what you want to do is just make a ruling through the center of the paper. And we're going to do that from top to bottom and side to side. Like so. And you don't need to rule all the way through at this stage. Now I'm going to bring in my circle cutter. And as I've discussed before with the measurements, I'm working with the inch measurements here on the side and each marking represents 0.2 of an inch on the side of your circle cutter so it goes up as example 8 inches 8.2 8.4 8.6 etc now i'm just going to unwind that white dial on the top of my circle cutter and i'm going to wind it out to 11.4 inches and I'm going to tighten it again and I'm just using that black marking on the side of my plastic dome there to be able to line it up to 11.4 inches and now using both lines on either side of the circle cutter we need to align them with the line that we've just ruled through the center of our paper and you can see here we've got this little ridge to the side of the circle cutter that's what I'm going to be using to line up um, the side of my circle cutter as best I can. So when you're happy with how that's looking, if you press down on that centre dial and just carefully run your circle cutter around the page and you will be able to see how that's going to work for you. It's going to be very close to the edges of our paper but essentially it won't cut off the edges if you have it centered there in the middle. Now I'm just going to press down lightly on this smaller dial and push in the white button and I'm going to cut our circle and you can see that's cleared the edges nicely. Now importantly, I don't want to move that circle now that I've cut it. 
So I'm just going to lift my circle cutter out of the way as well as that outside frame. And we want to keep that circle in place. Now I just want you to forget about these pencil markings in the middle because that your circle can um, turn a little bit when you're cutting it. Um, so don't worry about trying to line them up. We're going to make some new markings now. But just keep that circle in place. And this time on the outside edge of your circle, again, we just want to rule at six inches. And I'm coming down probably about two inches. You don't need to rule right through if you don't want to. I'm going to mark at six inches from side to side as well. And my circle has moved. My lines in the center aren't meeting up, but I'm just disregarding those for now. We don't need them. Now we need to also now mark at every 30 degree marking. So you can see here, you, it's going to be a little bit tricky due to the size of the circle, but you can see here you've got 60 degrees, 30 degrees. And again, down here, it's marked for us at 30 and 60 degrees. So that's where we need to now rule our next markings. And I can see that I've got it right down the bottom here. I can just see the edge of my 30 degrees. If you need to check where they are, you can just sort of lift your circle out of the way to make sure that you're lined up correctly. And I'm just going to, again, my pencil keeps wanting to break. Just a rule. I'm going to move that along to the next 30 degree marking and I'm just going to again fold that out of the way to make sure that that's right for me and mark and then we're going to come up to the opposite sides you can just see the marking either side of my circle there and you will be able to as well Check on that, yes. And one final marking. So now that we've got all of our markings on our circle, we can lift that out of the way. I'll just show you again on the cutting mat, but we've ruled a crossways and then you can see here at the 30 degree markings, these are the ones that you want to um, mark when you're ruling uh, through your circle. It's these shorter lines on your cutting mat. It can be quite easy to get confused and go in these big long diagonals, the 45 degree mark, but it's these 30 degree marks um, that you want to be marking. Okay, all right, so I'm going to bring in my spider web border punch and we're going to be working with it upside down and this is a great punch for this technique because you can see here with the spiders where we've got this straight line that runs straight through um, the punch out so what I'm going to do is I'm going to align the top of that spider web I'm just going to bring it up to the camera so you can see you won't see my pencil marking but basically my pencil marking is this middle line of the spider's web and the edge of it is lined up to this point. And I'm going to punch. Now I'm going to skip the next pencil marking and move straight to the next one. And I'm going to punch again, just lining it up the same. I'm going to skip the next pencil marking. Oh, the paper out. So skip the next pencil marking and punch. And I'm just going to continue doing that until we have punched all the way around our circle. Okay, so now I'm going to go back in and punch in between each spider web. What you're going to be left with, you will have a piece here that is not going to be punched either side. And we're going to remove those pieces. It's okay. We're going to remove them with our scissors. So I'll show you what I mean. And I'm just aligning it exactly the same. So just placing that pencil line right to the tip of our spider web. 
and punching. And you can see that you've been left with these two tabs and that's okay because we're going to trim them away. So you're going to want to make your way all the way around the punch again. Okay, so this is where I'm going to bring my scissors in and we can turn our circle around now and you can see it's a lovely big size. Basically what we're going to do is just trim away those tabs that have been left with our scissors just following the edge as best as you can. It doesn't matter if it's not perfect because ultimately we're going to have another layer going over the top that will sit in between. So you're really not going to see too much of this cut line, but you do want to have it, you know, as even as you can. All right, so we've got our first layer there with our spider's web. And now I'm going to bring in our second layer. And we're going to do the exact same thing as what we did with that gold piece of paper, only this time we're going to be working with a smaller size circle. Now I really want to work with this purple toned paper. So I am going to flip it over so that it's face down on my cutting mat and we won't see those pencil markings. And just the same thing. Let's find our center. And this time with the circle cutter, we're going to undo that white dial and I'm going to wind it back to 10 inches neatly and tighten that up again. So we were at 11.4 to begin with. We're now at 10 inches. Make sure I've got that even. And just the exact same thing. We're going to align the markings on that clear dome either side as well as this side marking. And I know that this circle will fit comfortably within this page. It's not going to run off the edges. So I'm just going to press down with my button held in and cut my next circle. Let's keep our circle in place. Now this piece that I'm cutting away, like the first one, you could use that as a frame for another layout. So certainly do not throw that away. And in case our center markings have moved, we're just going to forget about those. And we're going to make some new ones. And because our circle is much smaller, we're going to be able to see those 30 degree markings a lot easier. So we're just ruling through the center horizontally and vertically. And you can see here we've got our 30 degree markings. So we can align that easily and just rule through. I said you don't need to rule all the way through your circle as long as you're in about two inches from the edge just enough to see in your punch okay and that has all of our measurements in place and I'm just going to do the exact same thing I did with that first circle and just punch every second line And once you've made your way around your circle, just missing every second line, then we can go back in and punch these out now as well. And you'll still be left with a small tab section that you're going to have to cut away. But you can see there that it is not as wide as what that first circle was. So it's quite easy to snip away. Okay, so we're finished with our spider webs frame punch for now. And we can just go in, it'll be quite simple, as I said, because these pieces are quite small. We're just going to easily snip those away. And 
And now we're left with two circular pieces that we can layer together. And we, when you're happy with how that's looking, you can adhere that down into place. Okay, so once we've adhered both layers together, we can just bring it in onto our background paper and see how that looks. You can see the fun effect that that gives. Now I've still got a lot of open space in around um, the edges here, and I'm just going to add a few little corner sections um, with this beautiful rose print paper. I'll just lift that out to the side again. I'm just going to bring in my 12 inch trimmer, and you want to trim a strip of paper to be three inches wide by six inches and then you're going to want to cut two three by three squares from that strip like so I'm just going to layer mine perfectly together pop them back in my trimmer board because I want to cut them in half diagonally so I'm just going to align those two corners again make sure my papers are even and align those two corners in my trimmer board and cut through. I'm just going to align each uh, corner piece around about one eighth of an inch um, or one quarter of an inch from the corners. And it just adds a nice little simple detail to your background page and breaks up um, the background just that little bit, frames it nicely, like so. And when you're happy with where they are position-wise, then you can come back in with your adhesive and just add those into place. And I can bring back in my spider's web mat and I'm just going to align the tip of each spider web here to the six inch markings on my cutting mat. That will help me get it nice and even and straight like so. And when you're happy, you can go in and adhere that down as well. well prepared our background page for now so I'm going to set it aside and bring back in this beautiful orange toned polka dot paper which is the same it's the reverse side of what our mauve um, spider web frame is and we're going to create a fun little jack-o-lantern for our page I've brought in my smallest oval cutting template and my red blade. And from this, you're going to need to cut three ovals. And we're going to do that from the outside edge of our template. We have one. like so and that's all we need from that paper for now so we can move that across all right so once we've got our three ovals we can bring them together to create our pumpkin or our jack-o-lantern now I've just aligned the base of my ovals to a random straight line there on my cutting mat just to make sure that I've got them fairly well um, even. And when you're happy with how you've brought together your two halves, you can add that top oval over the top. And when you're happy with the shape, we can adhere them together. 
Now since there's only a small overlap there, I don't want to lose the shape there that I've got. I'm just going to use my tape chips to stick these two together. That way they don't move. I can peel off the backing paper to those. And then come in with my third oval and centre that over the top like so. Okay, so we've got our basic pumpkin shape. Now for today's project, I was actually inspired by this cute little Halloween plate that I've got. So that's basically what I'm going to use to um, as a guide to create my facial features for my jack-o'-land. And you can see we've just got some cute little triangles there and here's a little toothy smile. So I'm going to bring in my black card stock. And I was going to use the small oval for this, but I actually think it's going to be a little bit too big. So I've brought in the second largest oval and we're going to cut from the centre track. And I'm just going to align that again to a random straight line there on my cutting mat. And we don't need a full oval, so I'm just going to align that about halfway. And then come back in with my red cutting blade and just cut a little half oval like so to resemble his mouth. Okay, and then we just need to, this is where we do a bit of freehand cutting, we just need to um, remove some teeth for him. like so and I can do another one over here and then we can take one off the bottom to make his little smile Okay, and I'm just going to bring in some scrap cardstock now, some scrap black cardstock to cut the eyes. And we want two triangles, the same size or fairly close. So when you've cut one, just use it as your <clears throat> template to cut the second, and that way you'll get them the same. And I probably think they're a little bit too big. I'll just put them together and I'll cut them down a little bit. That's looking better. And then we need just a smaller triangle as his nose. Like so. And then to complete our jack-o'-lantern, we just need a little stalk for across the top. So again, I'm just freehand cutting. I'm just going to round out those corners a little. And we can adhere that to the top. So I've just done like a little curved, curved shape there. You can see nothing's been measured, just a little curve shape for his stalk. And if you're happy, then you can go ahead and adhere them into place. I'm actually just going to trim a little bit extra from his smile there, just in the center. Like so. I'm happy with that so I can adhere those features into place and put my plate aside now. A little inspiration piece. <laughs> and just using my repositionable tape. I can adhere in his little smile and his eyes and nose. 
Okay, so it's time for us to talk photos. And I've allowed for two in this design. And I've actually used a double mat around my photo. The photo size itself is four inches by four inches. And then I've used um, two mats to back it to give it that double frame effect. No different to if you were to print your photo um, with a border. That's the effect that it's given. Uh, but I've got the sizes for the photo mats. That is included in my PDF on the website, which will be linked below. But I thought I'll have two photos angled like so, and then I can add our cute little jack-o'-lantern there. And we can allow for some journaling if we like and some extra embellishments as well. But when you're happy with the position of those photos, you can go ahead and adhere them into place. And I've overlapped them just that little bit. Like so. Okay, and then I can come in with our jack-o'-lantern. Now I've got the stickers here from the Happy Hauntings collection. There was some really fun border stickers as well, which I don't need for this layout. And I really like this little floral element down here on the sticker sheet. So I'm just going to see how that would work in behind our little jack-o'-lantern here. even to the side there yeah I really like that so I'm going to add that to my jack-o'-lantern I think I'm going to use some foam squares to stick that into place just so that it sits up from the page a little bit and has that nice um, bit of dimension and we can stick that into place like so. I'm thinking to carry over this beautiful floral sticker if we add that to the top here. And I think I will use foam squares for that as well. Again, just to build dimension. Even though that's already a sticker, um, it's adding that Nice bit of added dimension. I'd like to add um, this little title. I think I'll go with This is Halloween. Which I'll tuck in under there. So we might add these to the side here. Again with my foam squares because I want them to have the dimension. Now like I usually do, I've gone and printed my journaling. I just do this in a Word document on my computer and print it out on photo safe paper and cut into strips. And I'm just going to add those to the top of my page in that area. And I'd just like to add the um, year date down here. And I've brought in my black uh, serif stickers that I'm going to do that with. So we can just add those to the bottom here. And I'm certainly not, I think it looks better uh, not having them perfectly lined up. I've just added a date there. And then just with my repositional tape, I'm going to add my little journaling strips here to the top. I've said it many times before, I'm just not a fan of my handwriting. <laughs> So this is just one little method that I like to add. I like the aesthetic of it on my pages. 
I certainly don't worry about having it too neat and lined up. We just want to add those through there. Okay, so with my journaling in place, that's pretty well completed my page for today. I'm really happy with how that's come together. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I'm so glad that you could all make it. I hope you've enjoyed seeing me create with the Happy Hauntings collection. Don't forget if you would like any information on Creative Memories products or any of the products you've seen in this video, everything will be linked below. But until next time, take care. Bye.